Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to Target Focus Life. My name's Steve and today we have a shotgun showdown between these two sporting guns. It's the SKB RS300 versus the Beretta A400 Excel Sporting. They're going head to head to see which one comes to the top. You ready? Let's go. Now, typically when I do a shotgun showdown, I wanna look at two guns that are pretty close to the same price point. These guns are a little different on price point. This one comes in at MSRP of 1169. MSRP of this one is 1979. So you're looking at 800-ish dollars difference between the two guns. But since I've done a review on the A400XL, I've done a full length review on the RS300. If you wanna check those out, we'll put the link in the description. But I was really curious, like, which one would I prefer? If I could only choose one, I mean, I both think that they're great guns for different reasons, but a showdown is all about if I had to choose one, which one would I choose? So I thought no better way than do a shotgun showdown because believe it or not, when I go out and do these showdowns, I don't have a winner in mind. I go out and I shoot, I shoot them side by side, and then that allows me to make a judgment, and then I have to choose on the spot. So that's what we're doing today. First thing we're gonna talk about between these two guns is a little bit of their specs. They're both 12 gauge shotguns, they're both 30 inch barrels, they're both gas operated systems. The SKB has a very easy to adjust length of pull option here. Just unscrew these, you can lengthen it super easy and it goes from 13 and a half to 14 and three quarter inches. So a lot of flexibility there. When we look at the A400 Excel, the length of pull is 14 and a quarter out of the box. The drop at comb is an inch and a half to two and a quarter inches, and it's the exact same on the SKB. Of course, big difference is on the SKB, you can make lots of different adjustments to the comb. A lot of flexibility here, both in elevation and horizontally. So you can vertically move this up, you can horizontally move it to the left or right, so it gives you a lot of different variations there. Of course, this has a shim kit that allows you to drop it more or to change your cast, as does the Beretta Excel. You can put shims in here, change your drop, change your cast, so it has that flexibility as well. The A400 comes with three different chokes, improved cylinder, mod, and improved mod. Uh, I already got it changed out for my Carlson's choke tube, of course, improved cylinder in there. And the SKB actually comes with five different chokes. It goes from improved cylinder to skeet, mod, improved mod, and full. When it comes to the weight of these shotguns, we're looking at seven pounds, nine ounces on the A400, seven pounds, 14 ounces, and just holding them like this, I can definitely tell this is a lighter gun, but lighter isn't always better when it comes to shooting sporting clays. Balance is also super important. Like this has got weights out front, that allows me to make my front end a little heavier, slow my leading hand down a little bit, get smoother on those clays. So that can be a personal preference thing. Last thing with specs we're gonna look at and compare on these two guns are the triggers. Uh, both these guns, I've shot them, just dry fired them. That shotgun, I mean, it's a nice crisp trigger. Fuels a little heavy, this shotgun. A little spongy as well, but feels a lot lighter. And of course, I'm pretty sure that's how they're gonna turn out, but we'll put the gauge on them just for quick show and tell. Five pounds, 2.6 ounces. Let me pull one more on that. Four pounds, 13 ounces. Enter, five pounds, 0 0.1 ounces. That's uh, about what I got in my review, so no surprises there. Six pounds, 2.9 ounces. Just to be consistent, we'll do one more. Five pounds, 15 ounces, so just under six pounds on that one, but we're gonna average out just over six pounds. This shotgun quite a bit lighter, about a pound difference in the trigger pull between these two shotguns. So, when we're looking at specs, which one am I gonna give the edge to? This is so hard, because if you wanna talk adjustability, absolutely this gun, but I love the trigger on this gun. Otherwise, they have very similar specs. I am gonna go with the adjustability on the SKB. So as far as specs, I'm giving it to the SKB because ultimately you need a gun that fits you well if you're gonna shoot really, really well. So that's what we have so far. Let's move on to the next category, which is ergonomics. Let's take a look at this A400. Very great feeling gun in the hands. It's got a little bit of a palm swell here. Really feels great in the hands. The ergonomics are nice. The balance 
is almost a little front heavy, which isn't a bad thing. Like I mentioned, in a sporting gun, it has a mid bead and a front white bead. The controls are oversized, super easy to operate. I mean, I don't have to look at this thing. I can feel it right there. And with one finger, slap, nice and closed. Cross bolt safety on the front side of the trigger guard. And then a milled out loading port. They actually cut into the receiver right here and milled that out, making it just a little bit easier to chalk shells full in there. It has the kickoff recoil reduction system, which I think is a phenomenal system. And it just looks great, by the way. It's got really nice wood, nice finishes. I'm not 100% sure what I think of this blue bolt, but that's kind of superficial. Otherwise, when it comes to ergonomics, the form, the function, the feel, this is a really great feeling shotgun. I am really happy with that. Looking at the SKB, a little narrower grip. I gotta say right off the bat, I like the grip of that better. This doesn't feel bad, but that's what's so interesting about doing things side by side. When I shot this in my review, I didn't really have any complaints, but when I got to hold that, then pick this up, I'm like, oh yeah, that one, I like that one. The fore end is, is nice, it's sufficient. The controls on this gun, it does have a safety on the backside of the trigger, which is my preferred location. Not that I'm gonna really complain about either one. When it comes to the bolt handle, nothing fancy, just a normal bolt handle. Works just fine. Bolt release, you gotta get some pressure into it. That's okay. Really not milled out on the loading port. Um, the wood quality isn't quite as nice on this shotgun. Doesn't look quite as pretty, but it does have a mid bead, just like on the Breda. And it has a fiber optic on front, balance wise. A little rear heavy, look at that, yep. And that might be the added metal back here makes this balanced a little rear heavy, making the front seem a little bit light. You might have a little issues with whip on this gun. So when we're looking at ergonomics of these shotguns, I'm going with the Breda A400 XL. A lot of great things going on in this gun. Pretty easy choice when we're looking at ergonomics. As far as other variations of these shotguns on the SKB, they do make a youth version and a 20 gauge version. And they also have a left-handed version, which is really cool. When it comes to the A400 XL, they have a sporting model without the kickoff system. And then they have a smaller frame shooter model as well. So a few more options to choose from here on this side. As far as build quality, they're both well-built guns. I'm not gonna complain. I'm gonna give a little bit of an edge to this one on build quality, it's just how things come together. Everything appears to be a little bit more quality, which you would expect when a gun that's $800 more, right? So no surprises there. Now let's look at recoil and reliability. I'm gonna shoot these guns side by side to see how they feel. And I'll tell you which one has the better feel recoil wise. And then also reliability if there's really any significant difference. So neither of these guns should have a lot of recoil shooting these light target loads, both gas operating systems. Just gonna go slow, feel the recoil here. That's a good slow start, got a good feel for it. You know what, you can't just tell things going slow. Sometimes life happens fast. You gotta really get it going. I've learned enough, no surprise, recoil wise. This one's lighter. This had less recoil, took it straight back into the chest. This kickoff system works phenomenally. However, recoil wasn't terrible on this gun. It did come up into my face a little bit more. I might need to tweak the fit of this a little bit better, but I gotta say, this gun fits me better and still recoiled more into my face than this gun. So out of the box, lower recoil. As far as reliability, let's pump out a few shells, see if we have any reliability issues, which I really don't think we're gonna, but let's see. So what we've already saw from recoil is these are gonna kick those shells out just fine from the shoulder. But what happens if we hold the gun loosely? Guns are meant to be fired from the shoulder, so I always like to see how do they operate when you shoot them how they're not supposed to be shot. Let's let it just rock back. Ooh, look at those shells just kick out of there like nobody's business. Oh yeah, no trouble there. Yeah, no issues with reliability. I didn't think there would be, but you know, you gotta try it out. You gotta shoot these guns. You gotta put the rounds through them. I would love to hear from you guys because when you 
share your experience, we can all be more educated. So we'd greatly appreciate that. If I have to choose a winner for recoil and reliability, the one that comes to the top is the Breda A400XL, a joy to shoot. That kickoff system is phenomenal. And so that is the winner of that category, but we still got more to do. All right, let's break these bad boys down. First with the SKB, show you what we're working with on the inside, how fast they break apart. Four end cap, four end. Now this one is a little bit trickier than the A400. I'm just gonna say that right off the bat. We gotta make sure the bolt is closed. We can take the barrel off. That plug wants to come with. That's the plug. Now, what you saw I just did is this came up and hit the receiver just like that because I wasn't paying attention. That's easy to do. Take the bolt handle out. Now this is where it gets even trickier. This comes up and out and you have to like, if you don't hold on to everything just right, it's going flying. Almost went flying there. Pusher comes off. Now we're just down to the receiver. Get my trusty punch here that I made out of a nail because I don't have my punch. Look at that, a little redneck, but it works. The trigger group, you have to like, you have to push forward and then out. Feels a little weird, quick and easy breakdown, not too bad. But as you're gonna see, when we break down this Excel, it comes apart a little easier. Four end cap. Actually the barrel and the four end can come off together. They don't have to. You can slide that out. And then what's really cool, after we take the bolt handle out, which you have to rotate this bolt head to do, that's the only tricky thing with this gun, and it's not even really that tricky. But you'll see the bolt and the pusher and the spring all come out together. I think that's pretty cool, makes it nice and easy. And this gun's apart. So a little easier to take apart where on the A400 XL, this is what you have. On the SKB, you have this piece, the bolt, and the spring, three different pieces. A400, all together, nice and easy. Neither of them are too bad, but this one's simple. Let's slap this back together. This one goes back together quite a bit easier as well. Just like when we took it off, gotta rotate the bolt head to that second line, pop that back in. Trigger group goes in quite a bit easier. Pin in, boom, back to the barrel. There we go. And as Jordan, the man behind the camera and the edits would say, boom, A400 back together, trigger group, goes in, push the bolt release, and then slide it back, you'll hear it click in. We can take this pusher, goes back over like so, and then you gotta kinda hold that with one hand, take the bolt, there's a notch in the bottom of the bolt that hooks on the pusher. Okay, then we're in. You still gotta keep a hand on this cause it's gonna go flying. Take the barrel like so. Now it's easy. That is one, two, don't forget about your bolt handle, three. I think it's pretty easy to see which one breaks down a little bit easier, which one's less complicated. It's the A400 XL. Let's see how they speed shoot. Let's see how well these guns can powder three clays. Up first, we have the RS300. 135, that's not so good. That wasn't bad for how far those clays were spread out though. I think we can get a little bit better. Ooh, 1.22 seconds. Here are some of the things that I noticed about this gun. One, I feel it right here. Now, some of that could be mismounting. I do happen to mismount sometimes when I do that with new shotguns, so maybe that wasn't the gun. But even when I was doing recoil test with this, I felt like I was taking a lot more in the face with this gun. Trigger, I definitely noticed the trigger being a little bit heavier. It wasn't terrible, but I noticed it being heavier. On the third clay, I ended up missing over the top a lot. Now the clays are dropping, but I do the shot all the time. I felt like there was a little bit more muzzle jump than what I'm used to. But overall, that's a pretty darn good score. One, two, two, I'll take that. Jordan, did I cheat? So we had to go back and look at the cameras. Even on the cameras, it's hard to tell. It was really, really close. 
Score of 1.03 as it sits right now. It took me 0.63 seconds to get off. And if it was legit, it was perfectly timed. And then I had a 0.22 and a 0.18 split, which 0.22 is not super fast. 0.18 is pretty decent. Either way, I was able to get on clays a whole lot quicker with this, shoot a lot faster, follow up shots. Everything felt better. Everything felt more natural. So that leads us down to the conclusion of which one am I going to pick? If I could only have one of these guns and I got to spend real money on both these guns, which one am I going to pick? Now keep in mind, they're quite a bit different in price. This one's $800 more. And to that I say, could you take the stock, the butt end stock of this shotgun and put it on this gun, but keep the kickoff system? Is that possible? Like I want that gun. I love the adjustability of this SKB, a very fine gun for right around $1,000, just above $1,000. This gun fits me pretty decent. There is some adjustability with it. I don't have to do a lot. So if I got to choose just one, I think I got to go with the Beretta A400 Excel. I feel a little bad saying that because this one is $800 more than this shotgun, but I'd love to see down in the comments below, which one would you pick? You're spending real money here. Which one would you pick? RS300, Beretta A400 Excel. Put it in the comments. I'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks so much for watching today. Hope you enjoyed the video. What other shotgun showdowns would you love to see? I love to see your feedback and I'll keep cranking out videos. Remember, whether you're in the field or in life, you're only gonna hit those shots that you're laser focused on. So live, target focused. See ya.